That kind of reminds me of uh, the story in Isaiah um, 14, 12. And I always bring this up when someone says the King James Version is infallible. And I'd like to bring up this passage where it says, uh, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken, weaken the nations? And so I did a little bit of research and looked up that. Because that seems out of place. Lucifer? I mean, how do they get that translation out of that? Because I mean, Lucifer isn't, uh, obviously it's not a you know a Hebrew word. So. Yeah, it's Greek, light bearer, <laughs> light carrier. Right. And, and that it's not a bad uh, equivalent for what it actually does say. How you were fallen from heaven, mm-hmm. O Halal, son of Shahar. And right. so that's a Canaanite myth. Halal is the planet Venus. He's, he's a young godling who becomes arrogant and decides, I'll rule the roost. I will uh, ascend to the highest position of the heaven and everyone will worship me. Exactly. But of course it's foolish because uh, though it's the morning star and it's bright for a moment, up comes the sun, you can't even see it. And so this astrological story symbolizes how you can see the, the planet Venus and you can't. Shahar, and it's the morning star. Shahar was the dawn goddess. Right. You mentioned a few times. In Psalm 110, uh, the, it, it, uh, in, it inaugurates the king of Judah as the priest of El Elyon, and, mm-hmm. and because Melchizedek and the others were both at the same time, and the Davidic monarchy adopted that, it right. says, from the womb of Shahar, your youth shall come to you. So he's the son of the goddess of the dawn. Or in the great Psalm, what is it, 139 or 39, I forget, uh, if I take the wings of Shahar and fly to the mm. uttermost parts of the ocean, even there mm. thou art with me, <laughs> is the dawn wow. goddess. Uh, they, they just don't have the guts to translate it that way because they want to sell some Bibles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, wow. You you, did, you took the words out of my mouth. That's right, Halil or Halal uh, bin Shahar. Exactly, it says it right there. But yet they say Lucifer because they want to tie that back to the uh, Genesis story. Yeah, that's got nothing to do right. with. Uh, I mean, there is no Satan in the Pentateuch. He only appears in Job, Zechariah, and and First Chronicles. And then after the exile, he gets merged with Ahriman, the anti-god of Zoroastrians. And uh, so they start looking for some kind of uh, uh, scriptural material to, uh, to supply a new origin. And they say, well, if you took uh, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 out of context, you could get something like a fallen angel out of this. But mm. it's plain in both passages they're not talking about that. Ezekiel 28 has to do with um, uh, with uh, Adam guarded by a cherub. Uh, it doesn't say it's uh, Adam is the one who falls with pride, not the cherub. And in this one, it's uh, it's the, the the god of the star and the, the planet. Wow. Yeah, I'm taking some notes about this Satan thing. I'm not complete with the article yet, but I'm starting to do some research about this. Do you think that uh, the serpent was Satan? No, oh, no, there's no chance of that. The Bible <laughs> never says that. Right. Not even in the book of Revelation where it says that the, uh, that the, the dragon Satan is the old serpent. Right. That, that doesn't necessarily refer at all. I mean, it might, but it's not clear that it refers to Genesis. It's referring to Leviathan, the seven-headed serpent. Uh, mm. And... Uh, it's possible that uh, I think von Rod said that the serpent in the in the Garden of Eden, since he speaks and, and so forth, may be a representation of the serpent god. But Nehushtan, who was kicked out of the temple, but if so, the writer has tried to downplay that so that it's just one stinking snake. Otherwise, it makes no sense that all the subsequent snakes would be punished uh, and right. rather than Satan being punished. And uh, so, as the story stands. Now, now we've just got Mr. Snake, a kind of a trickster figure like in American mm-hmm. Indian stories. That's right. I mean, even today, you look at snakes, they seem kind of sneaky and sly and like they're up to something, and yet and they're very dangerous. Uh, they seem to have a, a, a worry in the world. And, of course, and, and, and they were so dangerous back then. I mean, goodness, when you get bit by a snake back then, a poisonous, venomous snake back then. Forget it. <laughs> so, yeah. so You got a one-way ticket to show. <laughs> exactly. And that, that's, all, that's always the way I looked at it, too. I knew something was fishy about that because, you're right, I kept looking for evidences of Satan or Lucifer. And Lucifer only appears in the Bible once. 
And I just kept looking and looking, and I just could not find that relationship. But all yeah. throughout church, though, I just kept hearing it. You know, yeah, all they they the same. made it into a great, great myth uh, that, I mean, a profound story, the idea of the fall of Satan who cannot believe, he can't uh, trust the wisdom of God mm-hmm. creating mm-hmm. Uh, mortal man and then saying, uh, let all God's angels worship him and say, what, what are you kidding me? Worship this howdy duty thing here? No, not a chance. <laughs> he says, look, guys, let's let's get rid of Jehovah. We'll take over. And it doesn't work. And he says, mm-hmm. well, I'm going to prove I'm right. I'm going to screw up his, his beloved uh, monkey man, Adam, here. <laughs> I mean, it's a great story, but it, it's like a what's called a scholastic or a scribal story. It's a legend made up of reinterpreted bits mm-hmm. and pieces. And the story itself is never told as such in the Bible. Yeah, I think many uh, Christians that I've talked to about this subject, they don't even realize it, but many of them steal their ideas about the fall of Satan and all this stuff from Islam. Yeah, it's in the Quran. And it's right. in Second Enoch. It's in the life of Adam and Eve, uh, right. apocryphal works, but it's not. I mean, if the Bible writers, the New Testament writers, may have presupposed it, but we don't really know. They just don't mm. spell it out enough.